everybody. Uh, I just want to relay the word to y'all uh, on COVID from here in Houston, Harris County. So we've always historically been in the epicenter for COVID uh, because we are so large here. We're one of the largest counties in the nation. Um, and we're in Texas. Texas is not doing too well right now. But if you look at Texas data, we have 254 counties of which less than a dozen are driving the majority of the numbers. So we're one of those dirty dozen. Um, but I want, I've got friends in healthcare here and I just sort of want to share with you guys what's happening. So from within the hospitals, the, the word from people that I know personally, okay? So this is not just you know, secondhand information or I read in a story, you know, actual people I know. Um, <clears throat> largely, there seems to be two types of patients that are being admitted into the hospital. And whenever I say admitted, I don't mean they go to the hospital to get, you know, tested or to be evaluated or to see a doctor or stuff like that. I mean, they present at the hospital saying I have COVID and they say, oh, God damn, you need a room, like right now, right? That's what I mean, okay? So of the people whose conditions are bleak enough to be admitted into the hospital, there's largely two types. Um, there are the legitimately vulnerable, and then there are the overly cocky. And I'm presenting it this way because it doesn't do any good to have this conversation about, oh, they're mostly unvaccinated or the vaccinated are being hospitalized too, because that, that doesn't, that's not really what is getting people admitted into the hospital or not. I mean, there's one thing to say, oh, well, it's the majority are unvaccinated. Well, that may be true where you live, but it might not be true where somebody else lives. And I don't want I, I, I don't want to have that kind of conversation here because it's this it's not going to do any good and I think everybody acknowledges that but really think about it from this perspective it's the the people who are truly vulnerable whether they realized it or not <clears throat> and the cocky and by cocky I mean the people who got vaccinated and then thought they had nothing to worry about when running around smelling each other's breath or the people who decided to say you're not going to inject your experimental vaccine into me and the mark of the beast and blah 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 blah, blah right so it, and just from my perspective because I have gone through COVID with my wife before there was a vaccine and I have gone through it a second time after the vaccine um, <clears throat> I can tell you it was easier for me the second time whether or not that's based on experience or because I had a vaccine this time around um, is irrelevant. Some people have it worse the second time. I had it easier the second time. Um, so it's really something to think about. So if it's just the, the legitimately vulnerable and the cocky being admitted, what does that mean? It means number one, check your humility. Um, and, and I realize that everybody is thoroughly dug in to their ideological position. But that being said, you must, because you have everything to lose and everything to gain here, question your own position and just go through the motions to try to prove yourself wrong. Try to find something agreeable in the other uh in, in the other uh, across the aisle okay try to find something to agree with across the aisle because that is really honestly the only tr way that you are going to be truly informed or at least as close to it as you are going to get because what I have found what I've found is that on every side of this issue there is objective rational reasonable viewpoints for that given position. There's also hyperbolic viewpoints and every village has their idiots, including my village. 
Case in point, me. I got infected, okay? So I'm not really the authority on, on saying, hey, you know what? All of my practices will work. And if you do everything I do, you won't get sick. Because, I mean, I screwed up, you know, and that's on me. You have nothing to gain but education by looking to the other schools of thought for what you believe to be logical, rational, reasonable explanations or logic for that given position. Because <clears throat> what's going to happen, and this is becoming apparently clear, I don't think anybody's going to make it through this wave unscathed. Because at this point, there are no interventions. They're not really trying to stop it. Uh, and I think, honestly, I think we're really at that point. Because we wanted to slow the spread. We wanted to keep things uh, slowed down until a vaccine became available. And, and that happened. The vaccine's been available. And largely, everyone who wanted to get vaccinated has been vaccinated. The number of vaccines being administered every day has plummeted way down, right? And so we're at this point where if you wanted a vaccine, you got your vaccine and you're good luck, buddy. Good luck. Right. And that's really just kind of sort of where we're at. It's time to blow the damaged dam. We've been holding back the water for long enough and it's time to let the water flow. And those who have had time to build their boats will float. Uh, those who did build no boat, well, they better swim. But most uh, worrisome of all are the people who built their boat and didn't realize that they had a flaw in their build. And <clears throat> those are the people you really want to make sure you are not one of those people. Okay? Like I was. I thought I was doing everything right. And I got sloppy. Okay, that, that's on me. But I think from here on out, it's looking pretty clear. There's not going to be any more lockdowns. There's not going to be any more shutdowns. I don't think there's going to be any more mask mandates. Maybe there will, maybe there won't. Uh, but either way, as far as I can tell, for the, the powers that be, the existence of a vaccine is good enough for them. And here we go of most concern to me is the fact that we have children under 12 that are going to be the martyrs in all of this. Right now in Harris County, 10% of children that present at the children's hospital are being admitted. And then 3% are ending up on ventilators, which is a scary, scary statistic. I don't have access to the information of just how many children are presenting and what those numbers may be. Well, for all I know, it could be 10 children and one was hospitalized, right? But I don't think so because at 3%, right? So I don't know what the true numbers are. But I can say that regardless, that percentage is higher than what anybody has been preaching or, or discussing or suggesting in the past. And what that means to me is that means that adults are getting way too cocky. Now that adults are feeling safer and more empowered... They're just kind of sort of just throwing their children to the wind, unfortunately. And children are the ones that are going to have to pay the price. And they're all going to be able to vote within the next 6 to 18 years. So, just be ready for that. Um, you know, if we get it wrong, uh, their votes will reflect on it, right? <clears throat> so, we have that to consider. Um, just be ready. Um, you know, if you're for the vaccine, look into, uh, all of the recommended methods of care for people who are not getting vaccinated because people with the vaccine do still get infected and some of them do still develop symptoms as I did. And some of them do still end up in the hospital. I didn't, but that doesn't mean it can't or won't happen to you. So, and vice versa. If you're, if you're uh, not going to get the vaccine, you really need to look into it and just qualify yourself and make sure if you're a candidate, just really think about it. There's more than one vaccine. I mean, 
There's two mRNA vaccines. And, and there are some traditional vaccines now. Novavax and Johnson & Johnson. Those are worth looking into. Those are the traditional vaccines. So for everybody who's saying, I'm not going to get the experimental vaccine. Cool. Great. There's a non-experimental one. There's a traditional one. It is an adenovirus ve uh, vectored vaccine We're using recombinant RNA. And it's a recombinant adenovirus vaccine. So, and I'll get into what that means in another video. Uh, but suffice it to say, it's the traditional vaccines where they use a deactivated virus and they inject it into your body. And your body reacts and responds to it and produces an immune response. So, there you go. There is your non-experimental vaccine. And if you don't have it, you really ought to get it. Okay? Because... And I will, I will give this to the rational anti-vax crowd, okay? Because I am friends with a few. Vaccine injury is a real thing. Um, <clears throat> it is a very real thing. And if you are, if you have been vaccine injured in the past, you are definitely likely to be more of an anti-vax person, or at least to be much more conscientious of what's in a vaccine before you get it. There are vaccine injuries. There are vaccine allergies. There is myocarditis, endocarditis, myocarditis, if I can talk. Cardiac concerns, yes. So those are legitimate concerns that you need to look into and, and, and fully vet. Um, it's just because it's never happened to you doesn't mean it won't. Um, but that aside, you know, we have more traditional vaccines. They're not going to be FDA approved in time for it to protect you, right? The, the typical FDA approval process takes a long, 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 long time. Um, it won't, it won't be around. The FDA approval is not going to come in time for it to matter. It's, it's just, it's not. And the fact that it's not yet FDA approved is not a rational reason or excuse to not get the vaccine. It's just, it isn't. Um, it would be great if we had that kind of time. We do not have that kind of time. And even though it is not FDA approved, I, and I want you guys to really listen here. It, it, even though it is not FDA approved, it is still, all of the information is available there to do the proper qualifications to make sure that you do not have an adverse reaction to it. Because, I mean, we know what is in the vaccine. We know. And especially on the traditional vaccines, we know what the risks are. Those are well established. There's no shortage of adenovirus vectored vaccines. There's no shortage of recombinant adenovirus vaccines. So we know lots about what to expect with those vaccines and so it, if you're just if you're if you're stubborn and on the fence about the vaccine i, I get it trust me i, I do I, I understand one of my good good close friends is prone to myocarditis um, and he has an enlarged heart um and he called me up like borderline in tears and this is a this is a big man he is a big man like michael clark duncan and he is um he's scared man and and that that really just it, it struck home with me because in his mind it's like he's his risk factors are high because he's he's big and he's black and if you're the darker your skin the higher risk you are um and he is he is dark black jet black 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 um, not even remotely light. So he's in one of the, the highest risk categories. And um, because of his size, he's got heart concerns. And he's, he's upset. He's like, John, I just, I don't know what to do because, you know, the virus is, is, is you know, I'm, I'm at high risk for the virus and I'm at high risk for the vaccines. I don't know what to do, man. And I told him, and this is just me, look 
for the option in which you have the highest degree of control. You know, you can control what vaccine you get, when you get it, and what to look for. And you can take all the, as many steps as necessary to prepare for it. But with the virus, it's out of your control. You don't know how you're gonna respond, how you're gonna react, what it's gonna do, how long will it last? What will be the, the fallout from it? Will there be any permanent consequences? There's a lot more that we do not know about the virus. And we know a lot more about the vaccines. But at the end of the day, it's still your decision to make, man. You know, I, I really hope it works out well for him. You know, because I'm scared for him. And I think a lot, of, I think that's, that's really what it comes down to. And a lot of people just don't want to talk about it like that. Um, but, you know, I mean, I'm scared for my friend. I'm scared for a lot of my friends. They're scared. And I think uh, everybody's just sort of sick and tired of hearing people with other viewpoints pounded, into, pounded out on everybody that they're wrong and they're right. It's, we're past that point. You know, traditional vaccines are there. Everybody, uh, you know, I'm not saying to run out and go get the vaccine. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying just do your homework and see if you're a candidate and just take that knowledge with you so that you will have it. Because the one thing that the one thing that, that you will never the one thing that will never benefit you is to just blindly say, nope, not trusting it, not gonna do it. Why? Because somebody else told me to, which is really what it comes down to. It's really what it comes down to. If you haven't taken the time to see if you're a proper candidate for it, and you're and you have an opinion on it. Is because somebody else told you what to think or believe or feel about it. And not because you actually investigated. You know, that goes for pro-vax and anti-vax. So that's what you need to do. Just do the homework. Qualify yourself. See if you're a candidate. And then who knows. All that's going to do is better inform your decision. And that's all I'm saying. And for now, like I said, uh, you know, just it's, it's time for everybody to shut up and be quiet. And be ready to help everybody else because, um, you know, this is it. This is going to be the big one. Uh, and ready or not, here it comes. Please like, comment, or share. I'll see you all in the next one.